Oh, Donnie's talking. He just never uh, shuts up. And I just sat back. I watched the show. 45 minutes in front of a mirror. I banged it. I, I got it. I, I bang on. <laughs> what, what I meant was I bang on. I got it. Okay. Here he is, one half of the team, Donnie and Dolly, weekdays on Czech television from 10 to 12. And uh, according to our Wednesday NHL insider, Darren Dreger, a Don Cherry knockoff, Rick Dollywall. All right, so Dreger's out to lunch as usual. Listen, I've been sucking uh, 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 really bad this week because of the flu. I, I've worked all week. I'll tell you one thing. I gutted it out like the floor. You know that Florida Panthers injured list? Mm-hmm. Uh, put me on it. Same thing. Okay. And I've been gutting it out all week. I've been, but you know, and the guys like Henderson and Price back in the day would never, never have worked a little bit of, oh, I got the sniffles. Oh, I got the Price, especially Price. There's just no grit there. It's all just no, no grit. But you know what? I sucked it up all week, and here I am. I'm sure you did. It's good sucking this week, yeah. Rick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of sucking. Can I can I can I tell you a quick story about uh, Henderson? I think you were there too, Rick. Because I do you remember uh, several years ago? Like there was a little bit of snow forecasted. Yeah, a little pre- snow. These guys. And he preemptively called in a snow day. That's it. And we're like, but what I'll tell you. There's not even snow on the ground. There's not snow on the ground. But it's but forecasted. It it's going to be terrible. No, no, no. Go to work, Ryan. Show up Matt, at work. He didn't we're have the a snow tires. Veterans. We're, Matt, we're the grizzled veterans, mm-hmm. and we're, we're used to that. We, we we suck it up, but these guys like Price and Henderson, soft, you soft, so just pampered. Pampered. So You pampered. can't even do your pampered. show and go play golf in the same day because you uh, find it too exhausting. Because yeah, I live out by the U.S. border. You think I'm going to uh, make it a 19-hour day to golf with you, Price? Give your head a shake. Okay, we'll, we'll delete you from the invitation list then. That's good. Uh, you seem particularly cranky today, but the yeah because uh, you text me five. I'm I'm doing the show and I get a text from Karis. Five minutes it, I got left in the show. I got I got five hundred things to do the show. Uh, it, topics. A child of four could figure out the topics today, Matt. For crying out loud, it's, it's incorrect. It was eleven fifty seven, and you were eight. in yeah. commercial break. Yeah. No, yeah. we weren't in commercial break. What well, Donnie and I were live on the air, and I get a text from it. Hey, by the way. I got like 500 texts today during the show. Like, I, I think I might be the only guy from here to Newfoundland that nobody cares about that he's live on the air, but we're going to text him. And, you know, I got 500 texts today during the show. It's it's hard to re- return them. And then, Sakaris, five minutes left in the show. Uh, topics? A child of four can figure out the topics, Matt. Mm. Maybe okay. Ethan there. You want to well, talk about the defenseman that's let's... out six months? Let's uh, let's start with our poll question on buyouts. You hear no, anything no, no. on buyouts? I, I, I do the poll. I'm all set up. I got to do it my proper way. We got to talk Ethan Bear first. <laughs> You're not taking oh. me left, right. I'm doing it my way. Let's talk Ethan Bear. Wow, he is. He does sound like Don Jerry. Any yeah. chance they're going to walk away from Ethan Bear after this injury? Oh, boy. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, you know I, I we got to Ethan Bear's agent, Jason Davidson. Uh, this morning. First, let me talk uh, before the contract, Matt, uh, about the surgery. We all know he got one second left in that game. He got hurt, uh, aggravated an injury. He had surgery yesterday. The doctors actually, you know, are very glad they chose surgery after the results of the MRI. It was the best way to do it, go was to do it now. Because, look, you go to camp, you get a shot in the shoulder, and you, you're going to miss the whole season then, right? So he aggravated the shoulder at the Worlds, but he's been dealing with this shoulder injury since Bakersfield. And if you – Bakersfield is connection with the Edmonton Oilers and their farm team, Bakersfield in California. That was four years ago he played in Bakersfield. So he's been dealing with this. And that's why the doctor said, you know, get the surgery done now. He could have he just rehabbed and been ready for camp. But, again – if you get this hit on the shoulder in October, November, and then you're out six months, season's over. So it was a smart move to get the surgery done now, and it was uh, the, the right play by the agent, uh, the player, and the team. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get to his contract. He's got one year left on his uh, contract. He's an RFA with Arbright's. Uh, his agent hasn't talked a ton with the Canucks of late, but he's had good communication with Patrick Alvin. It's a process. They've talked about... Contracts are one year, two years, and three years. Um, I think we would all agree right now. Uh, I don't see the Canucks giving Ethan Bear term, not with his mm-hmm. shoulder injury. So I think it's going to be a one-year deal, the best way to go. Yeah. 
Uh, it, but that's a should, one-year it, deal that turns into really like four months, right, Rick? Well, because yeah, of how does, long he's going to be out. So it, it does, and it also walks Ethan, uh, Matt, to UFA status in twelve months, right? So it oh, is he UFA in twelve months? I thought he was two years away. Matt, Matt, Matt! I've been saying it on your show for five hundred times. He's a UFA in twelve months, and so he's going to walk. He's very comfortable. Uh, Ethan has told his agent uh, he's very comfortable with doing a one-year deal. And a show, kind of like a show me deal. At the QO number or below the QO number? I don't know, Matt. You'd have to add, or Blake. I'm telling you, they can mm-hmm. qualify him on June 30th, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They retain him at 2.2. Yeah. You can always talk about uh, a one year deal. There's club arbitration, there's player arbitration. I mean, there's a lot of things at play here. So we're going to have to wait and see what the Canucks do. You know, they either qualify mm-hmm. him, they could take him to ARB as a club team. And then the player can go to ARB as well, but he doesn't have a great ARB case, right? Especially knowing no. now that you're out till uh, December next year. So, look, here's my thing with uh, Ethan Bear. Everybody's saying, you know, let him walk. Okay, so let me get this straight. This management team traded for him, right? So you pretty well, you know they're going to fight for the guy, right? Um, you can't let him walk away for nothing, right? He, at the end of the day, look at your organization on the right side. heronic has got a shoulder problem. You're trying to move Myers. Okay, everyone brings up Juleson and Burroughs and McWard and, and all these other guys in Abbotsford, but Ethan Bears played 251 games in the NHL. He's got way more games than all those guys. And you can't let an asset walk away for nothing. And I think that's why I, 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 I have no intel saying the Canucks aren't going to qualify him. But, I mean, there's still time before the qualifying date. But I'm just looking at the right side in Vancouver and in Abbotsford. I, I, I think you've got to retain this guy's rights. Uh, the Combine in Buffalo, they took at least five prospects to dinner. Yeah. What more can you tell us about these uh, dinner dates, Rick? I think they showed a lot of love to uh, the Swedish right shot defenseman, Tom Willander. If he's there at 11, I, I've talked to some people who won't be surprised if the Canucks take him. Now, I always come back to this, and we, we always do this every draft year. You, do you draft for position? Or do you draft a best player available? The Canucks have not taken a defenseman in the first two rounds in the last four straight years. And in 2019, there were no defensemen taken. It's one of the reasons why you don't have a ton of hot shot prospects that are ready for the NHL in Abbotsford. So, anyways, they, they showed a lot of love to Tom Olander. Zach Benson, Matthew Wood, a couple of local kids, showed a lot of love to them as well. I heard also that the Canucks really liked this center, Nate Danielson out of Brandon, 6'2", 185. Uh, they've got him ranked pretty high. They've got him ranked pretty high, higher, I was told, by m- the most teams. Connor Bedard said in an interview that Danielson was the hardest player to play against in the Western Hockey League. That meant, When Connor Bedard says that, that and, and Connor Bedard didn't mention a 19- or 20-year-old. He mentioned a fellow prospect at his same age that's going to go in the draft. Also here, the Canucks like this uh, center, Dalibard Dvorsky out of Sweden, Slovakian kid. Hmm. But I think he's, I think he might be a guy that goes, he goes uh, the top yeah. 10. Hey, Rick, now, know, um, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. no go ahead. Just one of the things I've heard is that the Canucks may also prioritize size at this draft. That because of the head coach, because of the way they want to play going forward, because they're not the biggest team to begin with, don't be surprised if they have a lot of the bigger guys further up their draft list and well, go with Nate, a bigger Nate body Danielson, at number 11. Nate Danielson, 6'2", 185. Yeah. You know, he, he follows yeah. right into the – Matthew Wood is huge. Yes, Zach is. Benson is not, but Zach Benson's hockey Correct. sense is out of this world. Mm-hmm. He's the kid from Chilliwack and just a great kid. And, and you know what? Zach Benson, the skill, he drives the play. He, he's a difference maker offensively. So, you know, Willander's pretty big. Matthew Wood's pretty big. Nate Danielson's pretty big, so maybe mm-hmm. you're right there, Matt. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the bear injury. Uh, let's talk about Tanner Pearson, who um, is oh boy. well ahead of Ethan Bear on the surgeries uh, power rankings, shall we say. Uh, what's the future yeah. hold for Tanner Pearson? Does he touch the ice this year at all? Good question, uh, Blake. Uh, absolutely. We had NHLPS, uh, uh, NHLPA boss Marty Walsh on the show today. I asked him about Tanner Pearson. He said the NHLPA is monitoring the injury. Walsh said it is still a wait and see with Pearson. I did some digging into Tanner Pearson uh, last night. Okay, we are, this was supposed, he broke his hand November 9th. It's supposed to be four to six week injury, guys. We're month eight. Do you want me to repeat that so it clicks into your head? We're month eight. 
and seven surgeries later. Still no idea if he'll ever play the game of hockey again. They're taking it day by day, I'm told. Still up in the air, too early to tell. No time frame. There's no time frame as to when they're going to know. So Pearson's back east in his home province of Ontario rehabbing. Very sad what this situation has turned out to be. This is a very well-liked player in Vancouver in the dressing room. It's a pretty sad situation. And I, I've been covering this team for 27 years in this market. I can't remember an injury of this magnitude that was supposed to be four weeks. And we're in month eight, and we still have no clarity on the future of Tanner Pearson. Very yeah, sad. Ho-hum injury. Ho-hum injury all of a sudden turns into just an absolute mess. Rick, can it you is, just confirm for me so it clicks in my head, Ethan Bear is a UFA next summer, right? A child of four. First of all, a child of four can figure it out. All you got to do is go to what's that, uh, uh, the Puckpedia or whatever it is. <laughs> Today, in today's day and age, map for you not to know he's a UFA next year, I know. shocking. Shame on me. Shame. Yeah, shame on me. Damn right, shame on you. And by the way, you ripped me about Severson last week. Uh, oh, how the Canucks can go after Severson, and then you're the one pumping the Canucks should go after a Kerfoot. So, uh, how do you think no. the Canucks are going to get Kerfoot with monopoly money, Matt? Yeah, Matt. When did I pump the Canucks going after? You, you've been uh, Drager saying, oh, the Canucks like uh, Kerfoot. You were on it. Oh, Everyone's, uh, get Drager. Do you think they're going to get him with Monopoly money? Uh, Matt, last time I checked, you know, did you hear Ken Holland uh, the other day in Edmonton? He says on July 1st, the, the most I might be able to get is a sixth or seventh round defenseman. They're capped out. Mm-hmm. If the Vancouver Canucks don't clear cap space, they're not getting uh, Kerfoot or anyone on July 1st. No, well, of course not. Which is yeah. why they should buy out OEL. Yeah, well, are you going to cut the checks no. for that? Would you like to, if you owned a business, would you like to pay well, an employee? Here's it. Let's, 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 let's dispel this misnomer now, because right now, Canuck Sports and Entertainment owes Oliver Ekman Larson about $30 million. If yeah. they buy him out, they will wind up paying him $20 million. So right. over the long term, they actually save $10 million cash in hand. And, 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 here's the important part. Get seven million in cap space this year, five million in cap space next year, and then two point five in the subsequent two, two yeah. years. The Canucks end up in e- the Canucks end up in even worse cap space. The only thing that would be hurt would be their pride for uh, making that trade forward. and having to admit the mistake and buy the player out. Well, it's, not, it's not their yeah, mistake well, anymore. Yeah, and what's well, the owner's three, mistake? Four, five. It, Matt, years three and four are painful in that. Uh, no, that years three and four, you actually you save money. It's years five, five six. six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, okay. But five, here's six, the seven. thing. The cap will have gone up big time by then. We'll be able to handle a $2 million plus charge on OEL in those years. Yeah. You Believe know, the cap going I, up when I, you see it. I, 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 said to, I said to you guys last week, this organization's got to get to a time and place where they're not buying out players and they're not constantly Agreed. wasting time and energy on clearing cap space. Agreed. It's, it's just so it's then just, rebuild and build properly. But yeah. if the mission is we have to improve and make the seat and make the playoffs next year, well then put your money where your mouth is, buy out ODL and redeploy the seven million in savings that you're going to get to improve the club. On this particular player, whether you're whether you're reloading or rebuilding, it, the, the action needs to happen anyway because his contract is long enough that he presents a problem for both, exactly. both plans. So, exactly. Uh, Tucker Pullman um, would be LTIR if he's status quo. Is he going to be status quo for this upcoming season, Rick? Oh, yeah, I checked into Pullman this week, so he's still holding out. The player is. Tucker Pullman is still holding out. I uh, hope he can play next year. It doesn't sound like it's a concussion, more of a whiplash neck type of thing. He, he's seen, like, uh, literally, guys, when I say this, I'm not joking. He has seen literally 100 doctors. Uh, I know it's not 100, but you know what I'm trying to get at. He still needs clearance medically. He's not got it yet, but um, it's just uh, the hope and the will and the desire is there for the player. He hasn't been told his career is over, and he hasn't been told it's over, but he continues to fight the fight is what I was told. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Well, thank you for uh, this. Just, uh, hold on. Just, 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 hold on. Let me get in a couple of uh, – Noah Juleson, Canucks uh, still talking to him. Uh, talk started about a week ago. Surprise, surprise. That's when they knew Ethan Bear was 
going to be out a long time. Kyle Burrows, no contact. I checked in yesterday. Very quiet on Burrows. They have not talked to his agent, Ross Gurney. Luke Shen, there's a lot of people in this city hoping out uh, uh, that Luke Shen gets to July 1st. Canucks can get him again. Again, it's going to be tough. Luke Shen and the Maple Leafs, as of now, not close, I'm hearing. Uh, you're not getting cheap. Uh, you're not getting Shen cheap anymore. Last four years, you played for under a million dollars. That's not going to be the case anymore. Uh, he's got a couple of Stanley Cups. He played with Quinn Hughes. He played with Morgan Riley. I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, you're mm-hmm. not getting him under a million dollars anymore. No, uh, Ricky, we'll miss you tomorrow at the football game, but uh, perhaps we'll see Donnie and uh, we'll catch up with you uh, next Friday. Adios. This is the and Price Clip brought to you by Northlands Golf Course. Six to 90 day advance bookings relaunching on March 1st. Limited availability and conditions apply. Visit golfnorthlands.com for more details.